So I'm making a really big batch of dipped beeswax candles today, and I thought I would take you along with me. To make these, I'm using 10 pounds of this filtered beeswax from a small honey company down the road. It smells amazing. I'm also using two different types of wick material, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. To melt my backup wax, I'm using this old Pyrex measuring cup with a hook handle. And for dipping my candles, I'm using this four pound pouring pot, but you could use anything just so long as it's a little bit taller than the height you want your candles to be. And finally, my husband made this candle hanging rack thing for me last year using an old curtain rod and some wood. It works really well for this purpose, but you could also use a drying rack or something like that for this. All right, so what I've got going on here is basically two double broilers. I've got my backup wax and I've got my main wax, which I'm gonna be dipping from. And it's gonna take quite a while for these beeswax blocks to um, melt, like quite a while. Beeswax takes a while to melt anyway, and when you have it in block form like this, it takes even longer. I just don't feel like chopping it up or anything like that, so uh, we're just gonna be patient. In the meantime, I'm going to line my counter and my floor and try to maybe cover my cabinet um, and my drawers here because the last time I did this, it was quite the mess and it took a while to scrape up. Um, I will probably get a lot of drippage and stuff on my stovetop here, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it's a lot easier to clean up. And then once I get all of this protected, I'm gonna move my candle holder over there to over here so there's not quite so far to go. All right, I've got my candle holder set up over here on the towel. I'm using my flour and sugar as an anchor for the towel. Hopefully that works out pretty well. And then I've lined the floor with cardboard. So hopefully we are good to go. You don't want it to boil too much because then your water will evaporate a little too fast. So I'm gonna turn the heat down. So basically this is an all day operation. It's gonna take quite a while. And a lot of it's just making sure that you're topped off with water and wax. So I pulled out this candle from the last time that I did this project. And what I'm gonna do now is cut my wicks to about the same length as this because I feel like it was a pretty good length, not too much waste on the wicking. And these candles are, I don't know, 10 or 11 inches. So I like this size and I wanna to try to replicate this if possible. Okay, so I was able to cut about 20 of these and so I'll get about 40 candles from one package. As far as wick material goes, I like to use both square braid cotton and this organic hemp wick. Here you can see the difference between how they both look in the end, and honestly, they both work really well. I just tend to prefer to use the cotton for my largest candles and the hemp wick for my small candles, like these little birthday cake size ones. Okay, so it's been about an hour and 48 minutes, and I am finally at the point now where I think I can go ahead and get started. There is a block that has yet to melt still in here, but I think I'm just gonna squeeze that over and that will leave plenty of room for me to dip my wicks all the way to the bottom. So let's get started. As you can see, I'm kind of pinching this wick at the very middle, and then I'm dipping it in the wax. Really only do like a dip or two between um, rounds. And then I kind of wait until it's done dripping, and then I transfer it over to my bar, and I'll do like one or two of these, and then I'll just kind of gently, while the wax is still warm, I'm not pulling, 
too hard. I'm just pulling enough to straighten the wicking. Just straightening it out a little bit. I'm not too fussy about it because I don't mind my candles being a little bit knobby. Okay, so I still have a lot more wax, a lot more wicks, more wick stuff over there I can use and um, my curtain rod is full. So what I'm gonna do is just finish these out. I'm gonna dip them until they're full. And then when these are done, I'm gonna scooch them over and then start a new round. I don't want to overcrowd this bar. So I'm trying to kind of leave like an inch, inch and a half or so between each um, candle because that way they have breathing room and they're not bumping into each other. So we are a few rounds into this now, and if you look, you will notice that there are some drips accumulating on the bottom of these candles. And so what I do every few rounds is take a pair of scissors and I will snip those little drips. Or if the wax is still pretty warm, you can take your fingernail or whatever and just kind of pinch it off. Um, and then I'll put that wax back into the pot, kind of helps keep the bottom of the candle flat. So you can see here that the wax level is pretty high but it's not quite as high as I had it. So what I'm doing is after every round, I'm refilling this because you really want to keep it all the way to the top to maintain a consistent height for your candles. So I just finished the final dip on these candles. Push all these candles to the side and I'm gonna get going on my next round. So at this point I've used up all of my cotton wick and I don't have much wax left. So I'm cutting my hemp wick now to length to make some smaller candles. The process for starting your candles with hemp wicks is pretty much the same, except you wanna be a little bit more gentle. It's smaller and it's coated with wax, so if you pull hard at it while you're straightening your wick, the wax will just slip right off in those first initial dips. It feels like it takes a little longer for the candle to thicken when using hemp wicks, which is why I prefer to use them for making smaller candles. So I've gotten to the point now where I've completely run out of backup wax, and my dipping pot is just about three quarters full of beeswax. So I'm going to switch to making birthday candles now. And I'll keep making birthday candles until I either run out of wax or until I get tired of making them. And then I will just let the rest of it harden in my pot like I did with the last round. It looks good. It's